Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 20 of Book 7. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone what the definition is of proportional. And proportional basically states that numbers are proportional if the first is the same multiple of the third as the second is of the fourth. Or in other words, this equation. So that's the definition of proportional. So dealing with the proposition, basically we start with two numbers, a and b, and we find another two numbers, cd and ef, where cd and ef are the two smallest numbers of all the pairs of numbers that have the same ratio as a to b. So for the mathematicians out there, I wrote it here. I'm just going to read this once. I come, I reuse this statement in many of the other propositions that are coming up, but this is the one and only time I'm going to go through this. Let S be the set of all pairs of numbers X and Y, where X and Y are part of the natural numbers, such that the ratio of X to Y is equal to the ratio of A to B. And then CD to EF is an element of this set such that CD is less than or equal to all X and EF is equal, less than or equal to all Y for every XY that's in the set S. So again, this is all just for the mathematicians out there. For the non-mathematicians, I will restate it again. CD and EF are the smallest pair of numbers that can equal the ratio A to B. So starting with that, this proposition states that if that is true, then CD measures A and EF measures B. So that's what we're trying to say here. So how do we prove it? All right, before we start with any contradiction, according to proposition 13 of this book, if we have the ratio of A to B equal the ratio of CD EF, then the ratio of A to CD will be equal to the ratio of B to EF, and again, that's just Proposition 13. Here's where we're starting with the contradiction. So if CD does not measure A, so if CD is not a part of A, then it is parts of A. So in other words, we have to divide A up into something, and CD, in this case, is two-thirds of A, but it could be any fraction where the P is not equal to 1. And because the ratio of A to CD is equal to the ratio of B to EF, then according to the definition of proportional, then CD, if it's some parts of A, then EF would be the same parts of B. So let's divide CG and GD. Let's divide CD in as many parts as it is of A and E f into as many parts as it is in b, and we have that cg equals gd and eh equals hf, and cg is equal to one part of a, not parts, but part. All right, so cg is equal to one part of a, and eh is equal to one part of b. Now, since these ratios are these numbers are equal, CG is equal to GD and EH equals HF, then CG to EH will be equal to GD to HF. Makes sense. Now, if CG to EH is equal to GD to HF, then according to Proposition 12, we can add CG and GD and EH and HF, and the resulting numbers will also have the same ratio. So we have CG, the ratio of CG to EH is equal to CD to EF. CG to EH is equal to CD to EF. 
Now, CG is obviously less than CD, and EH is less than EF. But our original statement said that CD and EF were the smallest number of possibles that had this ratio CD to EF, or A to B. So this is supposed to be the two numbers, the smallest two numbers that can make this ratio. But I have two numbers here, CG and EH, which is that ratio, but CG is less than CD and EH is less than EF. So this contradicts our original statement that CD and EF were the smallest numbers. And since it contradicts what we originally stated, our original premise that CD was parts of A as opposed to one part of A cannot be true. So in other words, CD is not parts of A, it is one part of A, or in other words, CD measures A. And likewise, EF is not parts of B, it is one part of B, and it is E, or EF measures B. And that is the proof that if CD and EF are the two smallest numbers that measure the ratio of A to B, then A and B are measured respectively by CD and EF.